Remember, the YouTube ads feed the ducks. Good morning, everybody. It's June 21st of the Duck Adventure, and we've got some good news. Um, I want to show you right now here. Um, you can see the condensation uh, in here, and that's because we've got a, uh, a solid 67% humidity uh, uh, in the hatcher here. Uh, the, uh, the humidifier is working, but we've got uh, a Muscovy that's almost broke out of its shell. And there is about five more eggs that uh, have uh, pipped. There's cracks in the shell and they're pipping. So, oh, I'm hoping, uh, you know, I did candle these eggs and they all had, uh, you know, I can see the red blood vessels, but you can see that one right there. You know, it's got a, a slight break to the uh, egg. And there's, like I said, there's there's a total of five eggs. So, but it's, um, you know, the, the hatcher is very, there's a lot of condensation on the window right now because it's single pane glass, uh, but there is no condensation on the walls inside. So. Uh, I know, look at them coming out. A little Muscovy. Now this Muscovy broke through uh, late last night. Cindy said she was down here and she took a look and she could see him uh, breaking through last night. So he's been at it for about 12 hours. Now, um, there's some things happening today. One, um, I'm going to turn the light on here so uh, I have the light off so you can see me or see inside the, uh, the uh, hatcher. Uh, we're going to do an autopsy. There's 12 goose eggs that did nothing. Um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to perform an autopsy. I'm not going to film it, uh, but I'm going to give you the results uh, on the video. Well, I might film it actually. Um, now, we're going to be doing another load of eggs today. Today is day seven. I only collect eggs for a maximum of seven days, so it's been seven days and they're going in. Now, Okay, that was bizarre. Uh, the camera just, uh, I was in the middle of filming the eggs here and I was just about to show you the uh, gosling and the camera went into recovered data mode. So I don't know what happened, something corrupted or who knows. Uh, uh, now, okay, back to where we were here before the camera crashed. All right, uh, the gosling. Now I've got, uh, what I did yesterday is I took, I brought up the, uh, the midget duck, uh, the really, really small one because uh, I end up moving everybody uh, into the, uh, the, so they had, everybody has the barn. Uh, as one and this midget duck was just too small uh, to be roaming around in the barn that big so there's the gosling uh, the gosling is still really fragile uh, poor little thing and it, there's the little midget duck right on top of her so here I'll uh... all right well I guess third time's the charm here I, I just had to format my memory card something uh, I guess the memory card got uh, corrupted in the camera kept crashing here this morning all right so let's go back to the uh, the gosling um, because I think I was just about to uh, show you the little guy. Um, I've got the midget duck in here. Now, I'm just going to grab the little guy here. He's starting to walk on his own. He's just starting to walk now. I think that this uh, gosling is a Chinese uh, crossbreed. Uh, one, the way he moves his neck and his bill color. The other uh, goslings... Uh, down in the barn are uh, have a, a, a clear white um, or a yellow uh, beak. Uh, this guy has got a, a dark beak, which is the Chinese. So, and the way he's uh, now starting to walk around. Oh, look at the little midget duck. The uh, the midget duck is uh, upset when I took him away. But I'm uh, I'm gonna try to get you a better shot here. I got him in this little storage container with a, a 40 watt light bulb and a jar and some water and some food. But the, I brought the midget duck up here uh, because uh, you know I didn't want to have them all alone. But I, my gut's telling me that this is a Chinese goose. Just the way he moves, uh, his coloring on his legs, uh, it, it's and his bill. The fact that his bill is dark, because the Chinese goose that's down in the barn has a, a has a dark bill. But my neighbor only brought me over one Chinese egg uh, in this batch, and it didn't hatch. So I'm actually I'm just gonna take a look here and I'm just looking here at the actually well look here at the eggs. I've got the right here. Um where is it here? One of these eggs is the Chinese. Oh the Chinese died, that's what the problem was. I remember now. Yes, the, the Chinese pipped through and died. So I don't know my neighbor uh if the, his geese are crossbreeding. Which would be sort of interesting to see what an amnum and a Chinese goose looks like. So that's the poor little guy. But he is stronger, um, you know, he is uh, walking here. I'm going to just see if we can get him to come and get up again. Like just the way he walks and the fact that, you know, he's got dark legs. 
You know, his legs are really dark. So, and his neck is really long. But he's fragile. Uh, you know, but the, look at that little midget duck. That's hardly that duck's a, a week old. Now, there's one other midget down in, I'm gonna close this up so it doesn't lose too much heat here. It's at 90, uh, I got a 90 degrees in there right now. So, but there is uh, another midget down there. I didn't want to try to catch it because it was, uh, it's crazy down there. It's sort of like, uh, uh, it's like a horde. They're, they're, now that they're running in the barn, um, uh, they've got the whole barn floor. Um, you go in there and it's like the floor moves. They run around so crazy. Actually, this morning, it was sort of fun. I was in there five o'clock, so I didn't take the camera because I'm beat. I worked in the garden all day yesterday. Um, Doug and I went down there and <laughs> It was so funny. I wish I would have had the camera, though. Uh, Doug wouldn't go into the barn. He, I opened the gate inside the barn in the little foyer area there, and I opened the gate, and Doug stood at the gate and just looked at the at the, the ducklings running around the floor, and he wouldn't go in. I went in and got the three water pails and brought them out, and, and Doug wouldn't. He, he stood there, and then uh, uh, four little ducklings took off out the door, and they went right underneath his legs and went outside and ran around outside, and, uh, and he was standing there, and he was like just totally confused. Um, it freaked him right out. Uh, the fact that they're running around the floor now in the barn because he's been walking around the barn and there's been no ducklings in there and now the place is full of ducklings and and Doug's freaked out so uh, Doug isn't the biggest on courage so but right now Doug's outside doing his job because the predator's back uh, the ducks were freaking out today I've already been out twice with the shotgun uh, going through the bush and the swamp can't find it but the ducks keep going in the, near the edge of the yard and coming back in a complete panic so Doug's outside now with them and he's laying on the back deck and the ducks are all sticking around close to the house uh, where Doug is so you know we'll see uh, but uh, Doug's a bit off in his game today I don't know um, he uh, he's not feeling well I don't know if he he's got an upset stomach or something um, but who knows, dogs. I, I fed him this morning and, uh, uh, you know, I, I, he, we put some duck fat on his food last night. Uh, so I don't know, maybe he's got an upset stomach this morning. I don't know. Um, but anyways, the uh, Muscovy are hatching. Good sign here. We'll uh, just take another look here. Oh, he's out. The Muscovy's out. Here, let me, I'm going to turn the light off here and close the curtain because you can't see anything with the reflection. We got, we got to darken the room right up here so you can see inside the hatcher. All right, and it's hard to see because the humidity, I've got like the humidity right now, 68.9 in there. So everybody's been telling me to get the humidity up. I got it up for you. So there's one Muscovy. He's, she's out. Let's see if we can get a better shot here. Yeah, it's really hard here. The, uh, everything's fogged up. The glass is fogged up. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, there's no condensation on the walls. It's strictly on the glass. Oh, there we go. Keep this me back on. So there's our first Muscovy. And tomorrow's day 35. So if this is the start, you know, we've got uh, 50, I think it's 50 eggs in here. So, and there is some, there is some pippin on this tray. I don't know if I can get a shot. It's so hard to see in here because we've got the, the uh, humidity so cranked up. But there's one egg there, right there. That one there, I've got a uh, broken piece. So there, it's happening. Now I don't know, um, you know, if it's the humidity that uh, you know caused the higher success. Oh, he's so small. The scobies are so tiny. Oh damn, the glass is so bad here. We can't see anything. All right, you can hear him in there. He's so tiny though, like it's. They're so small. It's uh, you know, that's the thing about Muscovies. Last year when I got them and I was trying to sex them and figure out, you know, the different breeds, and there was this 41 little tiny ducklings, and I thought they were peaking females, and it turned out they were all Muscovies. Now that I know, uh, you know, they're there's the smallest little ducklings, um, which is sort of ironic uh, when the male grows to be a 16-pound huge freaking duck, you know, like. Oh, he's so cute here. I don't know if I can get a better shot for you. Yeah, the glass is so fogged up here. Humidifier is working full time. We're just burning through the water. Uh, it's, 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 I gotta come up with another system to fill it too. Uh, we're burning through about three gallons of water a day. 
All right, I'm gonna go to work. I got lots to do. I'm working on my garden, and uh, well, I'm gonna try to work on my garden. Yesterday, I tried to work, and it was like a freaking mud pit. So, um, I've got eggs to load in today. I'm gonna I'm doing the final sort on the eggs here, and I'll give you uh, I'll put throw the pivot heads on, and uh, we'll throw the uh, you know the eggs in the incubator today. Because I, I'm putting three trays, four, three and a half trays in, and we're gonna do the autopsy on the geese. So I'm gonna do uh, the I'm gonna film the autopsy here with the pivot heads. I'm gonna have my head tilted right down. So we have got 12 eggs. And let's see uh, what they've given us here. This looks like a dead one in the shell. Yeah. All right, that's uh, oh yeah, that uh, that guy died premature. Look at that. He uh, he died in the incubator. So that one died in the incubator. Well, that one's unfertilized. That one died in the incubator too. Man, they're hard to break open. Yeah, they're really hard to get open there. Uh, but this one really, another one like, they're they're not even close to uh, being ready. Oh, well, another one died. Yeah, that one's not even uh, close either. Yeah, that incubator was doing something, man. Look, you can see yeah, that is uh, not even remotely close to being ready. Look at the size of the egg sack. Look how small he is. All right, I'm going to uh, start the garburetor up here because I, you know, Cindy's not home, so i got to uh, get this done uh, before she shows up. She should be back any minute, actually. But I don't want to plug the sink. Um, so I'm going to just turn the garburetor on here and... Get rid of these poor little guys. Well, three's the limit for the garburetor. You don't want to be. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna show you it. It's a nasty scene. So what's this one? Oh, another one died in the incubator. Yeah, look at that. They're not even uh, developed here. They're not even developed enough to hatch. Like, so I'm uh, I'm lucky that any hatched here actually. Yeah, yeah they're uh, but this one oh that guy was absorbing his egg sac. The uh, yeah like look at there, the egg sac was almost gone. So it was close. So that one might have died actually in the hatcher. Oh this sounds bad. Oh rotten. Oh, okay. I gotta, uh, I gotta run the, ink. I gotta run the uh, garburetor here. That's just, whoa, that's nasty. Oh, Cindy would blow if she saw this. I'm gonna have to open up all the windows and door, or uh, window, air this kitchen out. The house has got a little bit of a bad smell in right now. Oh, another rotten one. Oh. Okay. Get down there. Another rotten one. Okay, these aren't even, that isn't even for, oh my, that's bad. Oh, another rotten one. Yeah, unfertilized rotten. Yeah. Oh. 
His geeks aren't me. Oh, this poor guy died in the shell again. Now, how developed was he? Yeah, he died in the incubator. That incubator, man. Okay, this is the last one. I'm glad it's the last one, too. That one died in the incubator. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he was decaying. So that's the end result. Okay, I gotta, I gotta turn off. The, I gotta get the water happening here. Watch this out. It's too much. So that's it, folks. Okay, so I, I'm going to put 189 uh, Ruin and Peking eggs in today uh, into the hatcher. Uh, they could be some crossbreed. Well, they are crossbreeds because they're mating with everybody. Um, I've got 40 purebred Muscovy eggs that are going to go in uh, because everything right now is at seven days. And like I've been saying, is that I don't go over. Uh, the, I can't. The after seven days. The fertility success rate on your hatch drops way off. So I, I'm not going any more than seven days before they go in the, uh, the incubator like I've been doing like all along. Actually, I haven't kept any egg over seven days. So, um, and it doesn't matter. I've been finding out, you know, the hatching, you know, they can uh, sit seven days and they, they hatch at the same rate as if you put them in fresh. So um, this is what's going in right now. Uh, like I said, we've got 40 Muscovies. And then a uh, 189, uh, you know, ruin and peaking. So I'm going to load them in the incubator right now. And hopefully the incubator is not going to kill these ones. All right. I'm uh, more into the uh, hatcher here. And uh, we've got a row ready. And the fan, um, oh, we just broke an egg. It was a little too tall. It broke real good, actually. All right, we'll just put that over there for now. Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, the grinding sound in the fan has now seemed to have gone away. So I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, the little uh, incubator god came here last night and gave it a lube job for all I know. I know one thing, everything's a sealed unit, you can't even lube it, so... Alright. Okay. Oh, there's the alarm. So the Muscovies, we're going to have a lot of small batches of Muscovies here. Because I don't want to go over seven days on storing them, so. Alright, so that's the next batch of eggs into the uh, infamous killer uh, incubator. I guess this is the uh, definition of insanity, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over and hoping, hoping for different results. I'm hoping though that that fan, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Anyways, we'll see. Well, you're not going to believe it. I've got a Muscovy hatch happening and that the humidifier that I bought the other day has now died. I can't believe this. I'm, uh, I got to do some emergency uh, humidification here right now, but I've got a, uh, a little guy here, the one that hatched earlier. I've got another egg right beside it that's broken through and I've got uh, one that's right there. Uh, it's broken through, but I don't believe this. Uh, so this is just a, a freaking horror show. Um, it died. It stopped working. And there's water in it, and it doesn't want to work. This is just unbelievable. Emergency situation. All right, uh, it's about uh, 6:30 right now, and we've got another Muscovy just came out. Just came out. Um, actually, you can see it uh, completely covered in egg yolk. There it is. So that's our second Muscovy. That tray's got two more eggs that are pipping through. And then over here, we've got another one here. Uh, now this one hasn't made much progress. It, it's sort of busted through and then stopped. I don't know what's going on, maybe it's taking a break. And then we've got another one uh, right there. So we've got uh, Muscovies. And right now I've got inside there, it's 67% humidity. But we definitely, oh, has she ever covered me? yolk. Just, uh, I'm just trying to get a good shot here for you. But they're very quiet. They don't chirp like the other ducks did. But then again, Muscovies are a quiet duck, so that makes sense. 
So it's our second Scoby. And the one that hatched here this afternoon, or uh, it uh, you know hasn't done much. It should be interesting tomorrow morning. So, and uh, I went to town, bought another humidifier, uh, and then I came home, and this one's working. So I don't know what's going on here, but I've got a second one sitting here, just in case. Um, you know the thing's pumping out humidity here, and I don't know. I just wish the reservoir was bigger on it. And the thing is, because of the amount of stuff I have running in here, I can't even add another uh, humidifier and have two of them running in there because uh, it, it, it takes me over my 15 amp circuit. So unless I steal some heat, but I'm not going to screw with anything right now. I'm just going to keep uh, on, on top of it here and, because we've got the Muscovy hatch going and I'm not taking a chance here on uh, losing anything by opening the door and screwing with the hatcher. So good news. We've got uh, you know some Muscovy action happening uh, on the Duck Adventure. What a relief. I was getting worried there. I thought it was going to be total flop. And my, my little gosling over there on the table, uh, I'll give you a shot here. Um, she, he's so weak. And I'm really thinking it's a, it's a Chinese gosling uh, because of the black beak. I was down earlier today, uh, you know, looking again at the, uh, the ducklings, or the goslings down there. And the emblem uh, definitely is a, is a yellow beak. And this is definitely a black beak. But the poor little thing, like, look at the little uh, midget uh, duck there sticking to it that little midget duck is so small that little duck actually is about the size of a newborn so that's uh, what's going on here on the duck adventure today well the duck adventure we just we just don't stop having bad luck here I'm uh, I just don't believe it the the humidifier the, the humidifier I bought the other day I put it in it died today, as we know earlier, and I whipped to town and I bought another one and I came home and it was working again. But the, you know, I, I can't trust it. And I was in the in the kitchen table working. I thought, okay, it's running. I'm in the kitchen table. I kept coming in here every, uh, basically every, about every 20 minutes. And I was checking it. Yeah, but it was still running. I thought, okay, that's strange. Why, you know, what would cause it to uh, reset? And, and it would stop working. And, you know, and it kept going, the red light coming on. I turned it off and wait and turn it back on. So the only thing it was overheating because it was running continuously um, because the, the, you know, the amount of humidity that's required uh, in a hatcher, the, the little humidifier just couldn't do, which is sort of stupid when it says on the box that it's for a large room. But anyways, I bought another one when I was in town, the exact same thing because there was no, I went to three different stores and there was nothing in town uh, even remotely close that would work. Uh, there was a lot of like, uh, you know, $150 ones that were, uh, you know, computerized and, you know, all the bells and whistles and, you know, just a, a stuff I didn't need. Uh, and then some really tall units that, you know, I basically had to have to take about three shelves out to even fit it in the unit. Well, this time it died and we had a, you know, we had a fatality here. Uh, I've got a dead Muscovy here. Uh, it had pipped through the shell. I thought maybe I could save it and it was just a pip in the corner and it, it turned out it's dead. It just died too, like just died. Uh, when the thing turned off, something told me I was sitting in the, the lab, at the computer on the laptop and, and I went, okay, I'm going to go check. It's been 20 minutes I came on here and the, the humidity was at 15% and uh, the machine had tripped again. It was The red light was on. So now I've got two of them in there. Um, I'll just show you here. I've got two of them now in the bottom of the machine um, and I've got the covers off them. Uh, so that I can actually see what's going on here and it, now it seems that uh, because there's two of them they're cycling the controller now where uh, the humidity climbs um, and then turns off so I don't know if that's the break they need they, they can't run continuous contrary to what the manual says the manual says clearly in it that you can run to run it continuously uh, it, like it says you can run it continuously so Monday I've got to phone the people in Toronto the, the distributor for these people it's not even Honeywell some other company called Kaz or something uh, under the Honeywell brand, I've got to call them up and complain to them because this is ridiculous. Like, not even 24 hours of running continuously, and the thing dies and, and keeps resetting and tripping. So I've got two of them in there now. It seems to uh, it's cycling now. So it, it, it's it's producing enough steam. Like right now, it just cycled. It came on and off, and it's sitting 70% humidity. Um, but I also, because I've got two of them in here now, uh, they draw 400 watts of power. I've got 600 watts of light bulbs running for the heat source. The fan, it doesn't say on it how many watts it's burning, but I'm, I'm, or how many watts it's consuming, but I got a hunch it's about a 300 watt fan. So if you got 600 watts, 300 watts for the fan, that's 900 watts, and then two of those uh, heat, humidifiers which run at 400 watts each, uh, that's going to blow my breaker. 
So uh, what I've had to do is just to make sure I turned off the two light bulbs at the very top. Heat rises, so I turned those two off at the very, very top. Uh, all I've got now for a heat source is 400 watts of bulbs on the bottom. Um, and the heat is climbing. It's slow but sure. It's not climbing as fast as I would like to get back up to the temperature because I had to have the door open uh, to put that second humidifier in. Uh, but at least now, uh, you know, I've got the humidifier, uh, the humidity, two of the machines in there that, you know, it, it, it's what I've seen so far is that it is cycling. So the heat's coming up, it's cycling, and it's turning off so it's not running continuously. Maybe that's what the trick is, uh, that these uh, humidifiers, you know, made in China, but, you know, supposedly to North American standards, not. But anyways, um, I just don't believe it. We lost them at Scoby, though. And it was just now, because not even an hour and a half ago, this Muscovy was alive, poking, and when I came and saw it, the, actually you can see, I'll show you, the dried out, right there, see the dried out memory? That's where the pip was, and it was dried out, and I picked it off, and it was just died, like it's still, the poor little guy just died inside. Like I just missed it, I don't know, maybe a half hour earlier, but then again, a half hour ago, the humidifier was working, so. Uh, but it is cycling right now, they, you know, they're running. I'll show you again here, you can see the uh, humidity. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off the both of them. But like I said, I'm burning 800 watts of power right now. Uh, on a, you know, on a 15 amp breaker, you can run 1875 watts of power maximum. Uh, 1500 watts is a good rule of thumb to go by, you know, 80% of the, of the load. So you don't blow the breaker. Um, this is unbelievable. I, I don't believe the the streak of bad luck I'm having. So it's just it doesn't end. Oh, well, just keep you know keep doing this until I either uh, blow myself up my you know or uh, have a nervous breakdown or something here. I don't know. I'm getting frustrated, people.